like so many of us around the world, I was absolutely transformed through higher education. For my undergraduate degree, I attended Wesleyan University, a small liberal arts school in Connecticut where I learned critical thinking, systems thinking, the importance of social and ecological justice, and the value of following my bliss. I also downloaded a type of learning that was integrated between what was presented in the classroom and life itself. I walked onto campus a young adult operating from a certain level of consciousness and four years later walked out completely transformed. This is the reason I've been motivated to develop the Center for Climate Justice. Colleges and universities are critical sites for social transformation and climate action. They are sites for innovative ideas, have massive research capacity, and most importantly, are dynamic spaces for engaging young people open to the type of radical transformation needed to address climate change. Young adults are also deeply motivated because their generation and future generations will be dealing with the greatest and most devastating impact of climate change if we continue business as usual. This is why I'm launching and co-creating the Center for Climate Justice across multiple campuses of the University of California. We are here at the TEDx Gaia Journey Countdown event because we recognize climate change as an urgent existential crisis. And we know that the window for taking action is rapidly closing. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change warns that if we continue business as usual, global temperatures will increase to 1.5 degrees Celsius by the year 2030, beyond which will unleash even more dangerous consequences for all life on the planet. However, these impacts will not be experienced equally as low income and marginalized communities, particularly in the global south, will be hit hardest due to loss of livelihoods, food and water insecurity, displacement, health effects, and more. This is simply unacceptable. Current strategies, particularly at the international level, have been weak and inadequate given the science. These strategies keep the political economic systems intact that cause the problem in the first place and largely ignore equity issues. So we need a different approach. We need a climate justice approach. Climate justice treats climate change as an equity issue. It recognizes the global and deeply interconnected nature of the climate crisis and that both the causes and the effects of climate change disproportionately affect low income and marginalized communities and people of color around the world. Climate justice also connects the dots between social and ecological crises, thereby addressing the underlying drivers of climate change from an equity perspective. Let me give you an example of the ways in which fossil fuel development in the US intersects with environmental injustice, COVID-19, and deforestation in the Amazon. In many places around the world, low-income and marginalized communities are the most impacted by the presence of the petrochemical industry. Emissions from these facilities, like this one in California, degrade air quality in the region, putting residents at higher risk of cancer, heart disease, respiratory problems like asthma, and other health impacts. In the US, People of color, especially African-American, Latinx, and Native communities, are more likely to live near power plants and refineries and are therefore disproportionately affected and at greater risk of mortality from COVID-19, given these health preconditions. This is compounded by the often lack of adequate health care and higher exposure associated with their status as essential workers. So how is this connected to the Amazon? Well, the U.S. imports more crude oil from the Amazon than any other country. California's refineries process over 170,000 barrels of those imports every day, making California refineries the largest consumers of Amazon oil in the world. Oil exploitation in the Amazon is responsible for deforestation and the degradation of indigenous territory and has severe health impacts for local and indigenous communities. So by centering social justice and equity in climate action, we simultaneously address environmental racism, access to healthcare, biodiversity loss, deforestation, and the impacts on indigenous health, culture, and territory, all the while holding polluters accountable and leading the world toward equitable climate action. This is the work we are undertaking through the Center for Climate Justice of the University of California the aim of which is to leverage and harness the power of the university to address the climate crisis from a systems and social justice perspective. 
The center provides transformative education, conducts innovative, broader impact research, and engages the public in support of environmentally sustainable and socially just forms of climate action. There are four key approaches of the Center for Climate Justice. The first approach is convergence research, which is highly interdisciplinary, in fact, transdisciplinary. It engages academic and non-academic actors and aims to solve urgent and complex social and ecological problems such as climate change. It requires deep integration across a wide range of disciplines and fields of knowledge with interaction sustained over decades. The convergence paradigm at the nexus of fields and disciplines can catalyze important innovations that have real world application for addressing the climate crisis. The second approach is engaged or participatory action research. Participatory action research is an approach that challenges traditional forms of research often seen as hierarchical and extractive, and instead attempts to democratize data collection, choice of questions and analysis by working collaboratively with non-academic partners in the co-production of knowledge. Participatory action research is largely distinguished from other approaches in that its goal is not only to study and analyze the world, but to advance social justice goals. The third is political ecology as a systems and equity approach. Political ecology is an interdisciplinary field that addresses environmental problems as social, political, and political economic, analyzes them from a systems perspective, and forefronts equity and justice. And the final approach engages awareness-based practices. Climate justice requires nothing less than a paradigm shift in our fundamental relationship to all life on the planet which will inform goals that are integrated for societal, ecological, and planetary well-being. I believe this requires working across multiple scales in a fractal way, from the individual to communities, state entities, nations, and globally. Education is key. I teach undergraduate and graduate students, and in my experience, when it comes to the climate crisis, students like so many of us feel a deep disconnection between the head, the heart, and the hand. It's Otto Scharmer and colleagues at the Presencing Institute write about and discuss. Students recognize climate change as a massive existential crisis with dire consequences and can see that insufficient action is being taken by leaders. They can feel paralyzed and disempowered. Deep down, they know it's going to take a lot more than individual acts of turning off our lights and riding our bikes. Deep down, we all know it will require systemic changes, but we don't quite know where to start how all the pieces fit together and how to work collectively to address the root causes of climate change. A project that engages many of these approaches and in many ways is a precursor to the work of the center is the Climate Alliance Mapping Project, which is a collaborative project between academics, environmental organizations and indigenous nations working together on issues of climate justice. It brings together critical research, the power of maps and digital storytelling allowing communities to share their own stories in their own words, in their own way on a digital platform. One of our first maps was in collaboration with the NGO Amazon Watch to identify areas where fossil fuel development intersected with conservation land and indigenous territory in the Amazon. Because of the cultural and ecological importance of the Amazon and its critical role in climate regulation and as a carbon sink, it was clear that oil development made no sense there. This is even more obvious given the science that argues most of the world's fossil fuel reserves must be left underground in order to hold global temperature rise below 1.5 degrees Celsius. We've also worked with indigenous leaders to map fossil fuel pipelines and pipeline spills across the US, highlighting the places where pipelines such as Keystone XL cross water sources, particularly on and near indigenous lands. We are now collaborating with a climate justice organization to support their interests in digital storytelling to add to these powerful maps. We will continue and expand work such as the Climate Alliance Mapping Project through the Center for Climate Justice, where we aim to support deep collaborations between and across disciplines, institutions, and communities, and empower the next generation of climate justice leaders to address the climate crisis from a systems and equity perspective. We have a number of new and exciting projects in the works. The first one is the Climate Justice Research and Action Plan. It is oriented around a convergence research agenda that includes multiple ways of knowing from our partners in academia, climate justice organizations, 
local communities, indigenous nations, state entities, and private sector actors committed to regenerative economies. The second is the development of a climate justice science shop, which supports the specific research needs of our partners interested in equity-based climate solutions by connecting them with students, faculty, and researchers committed to real-world impact. The Climate Alliance Mapping Project is the result of a sign shop process. The final project is the development of educational curriculum and a process that builds on an existing University of California initiative called Bending the Curve, which began in 2015 and focused on the science, economics, and technology of climate change. Inspired by the words of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. who said, the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends toward justice. At the center, we plan to develop curriculum for students and the public specifically oriented around climate justice. We propose the bold goal to annually educate and equip 1 million climate justice change makers to bend the curve on climate change toward equity and social justice. We don't have a generation. We don't have 20 to 25 years to make these changes. So every year we hope to educate, empower, and catalyze millions of students at the University of California and beyond, as well as individuals globally who participate in the center's offerings to go out into the world and bend the curve on climate change from a systems and equity perspective. 